Divine truths frequently ask questions. Jesus, Mary and others provide answers to questions that are frequently asked by members of the media and the public. How can we learn to parent as God does? Well, if you, this is a very important question, I feel, as well. Um, and that is that uh, if you look at how God parents, God's, uh, God constructs a whole framework of laws. And these framework of laws impact upon us physically, emotionally, spiritually and morally. So all of these framework of laws all have results and consequences. Some of them are happy consequences based upon whether we live in harmony with them and others are not so happy consequences. They're sad and cause yep. pain and suffering when we live out of harmony with them. Now, God never forces us to make a choice. Never forces us to make a choice. God encourages us to make a positive choice by having this feedback system of as to what is loving and what is unloving. That's how our choice. And, and even if we make no choice, that is a choice. We're breaking some laws of omission, if you like. There are sins of omission or, and sins of commission. And by a sin, I mean every time we sin, all we're doing is breaking the law of love every time. And there are sins or breaking laws of love that are sins of omission. In other words, that we failed to do something that we should have done. Right? Yep. And then there's sins of commission, which are, which are we did something we shouldn't have done. That, or did something that was out of harmony yeah. with love, right? Now, it's very, very important for us as a, as a parent to understand that this is what we need to help our children understand as well. Unfortunately, again, if we don't understand it well, so, then obviously we're not going to be able to teach our child. And this is where it's very important for us as parents to research about God and God's laws and understand the framework of the universe before we have children. And unfortunately, for most people, that doesn't happen. They have children before they understand the truth about the framework of the universe. And so now they've got to go through this learning process of their own while the child is there. And this is why a lot of parents feel completely at sea. Right? But if you think about that particular role, that particular role of having the law and understanding the law, then of course we could make laws in harmony with God's laws of love and allow the child through a process of decision making and teach the child, in fact, how to make decisions that are in harmony with love and show them when the decision is out of harmony with love, what the consequences were. Like, so, so did you notice when you, when you went up to that little child and stole his car, did you notice you got a bop in the nose? That there's a consequence there of you breaking a law of love. You never asked the child and you never gave the child the ability to say no. And, and so if you've only got a little toddler who's, who's now just stolen somebody's car and they're having a big fight and Barney, you've got the ability to reason with them at their level as yep. a parent if you chose to do so. The problem for most parents is that they do not take the time to do this, right? To, to, to do this takes time. Yep. And most parents are so busy doing everything else that they don't give themselves the time to reason with their children. And as a result of that, they enforce a law with punishment. As, and we revert to violence in terms of punishment with our children because we're impatient about doing it the other way, which is a God's way of doing it, by allowing the child to go through an experience and trying to show them through the experience that yeah. something is wrong. So, th so that's different than the parent seeing their child steal another child's car yeah. and then berating their child for doing that? Yes. Obviously, God doesn't berate them. Yeah. What God's trying to do is show you through the consequence, whenever you choose an action, and you, you instantly, generally, if you're sensitive, feel the consequence of your action. You, you'll feel the positive consequence and go, wow, that, that was really good. That turned out really well. There's some feedback that you must have acted in harmony with love, right? Assuming there's no addictions yeah. involved. And then, and then when you've got a negative consequence, then you would go, oh, wow, that was pretty painful. <laughs> something mm, must something have been out of yeah. harmony with love there, right? Now, if we as parents do exactly the same thing with God's children that, we are, pl that are placed in our care, then our child, ch children will learn very rapidly about love or at least as much as what we know about it. And they will learn very rapidly about God or at least as much as what we know about God 
And then once they get to four or five years of age and they've learnt all of those things, now through their own experimenting and if we've, if we've helped them to, not, to allow them to make mistakes without getting punished and so forth, now they'd be willing to experiment themselves but almost by that stage, by the time they're four or five years of age, all of their actions would already be in harmony with love yeah. if we'd done the job, yeah. right? And that doesn't mean that they wouldn't choose to do all sorts of things that doesn't, don't confront us because as parents, a lot of us want control, not, not love, yeah. right? Yeah. And a lot of us want to dictate to the child what it does and, and you know, obviously that's a problem. But, but what we would do is if we were truly engaged with the child in this manner, we would love that the child is independent by five years of age. What do we see on the earth today? They're 35 years of age and they're still not independent. <laughs> and there's something wrong with that. Yeah, that's, and that's a, that's a confronting thing. Yeah. And I've posed this question to parents before. How would you feel if your child was five, six, seven, eight with their soulmate living in harmony with God? Exactly. Being independent of you. Being independent of you having their own house, attracting their own <laughs> method of survival, and knowing more than you do, <laughs> yeah, <that's... laughs> happier than you are, <laughs> and so forth. I would just suggest that the majority of parents would have a meltdown about that and would try, try to get control of the whole situation, what they feel is control of the whole situation. Now, you know, God's not like that. So God doesn't try to get control of our situation, even when we're on the path down the road to iniquity, God's still yeah. not trying to get control of the situation. All God's trying to do is demonstrate to us the pain and suffering that we're, we're creating in our own life through our choices. So, so the reality is, yes, I agree. Most parents would be severely like, conflicted with this kind of concept where, where the child, by the time it's eight, it, it knows you know, more than most people would know in a university degree. Uh, because it has the ability to absorb information that rapidly. It, it knows multiple languages, it knows, it knows who its soulmate is, it knows what, what the loving thing to do is in most situations, and the reality is most parents would... And, and the reality is the child would be probably confronting the parent's unloving behaviour most of the time by this stage, um, and so most parents would feel maybe a degree of anger and <laughs> rage towards their child under those circumstances, unfortunately. Um, so the reality, though, is that if we inculcate with the child these issues of love, truth, humility, uh, respect for law, and these kind of things that are all harmonious with love, and they see the relationship between law and positive outcomes and law and negative outcomes if we, if we break the law, then, then they will grow up very harmonious with God's environment, very harmonious with the point of their creation, and also, even more importantly, is they will be left to find themselves through this particular process because now they understand that the way to mm. find yourself is to bring your life into harmony with love and that's how you discover your true self, your true nature, your true personality that God created. And, and if we give them that gift, they will always remember who gave them that gift. All right? But if we take that gift away from them, which is what most parents on this planet at the moment do, then in the end, they, they often as adults think of us with a lot of resentment and, and, and unfortunately a lot of pain. Yeah, and that, that's one of the sort of the big things that I see by you know, you know, dealing with your own stuff is that when you deal with your own stuff, you can, you can, your children change straight away. And, you know, it sets them free. Yeah, is the term that I that I like. Is yeah, it's like you release them from your own from your own in, rules. invisible, you know, constriction that you have on them. That's correct. And you see them change, and they yeah, yeah they open up and. And most parents, I don't feel at this point in time, understand this underlying principle that everything I've just talked about is not about what you say to them. It's about the feelings that come from your soul on these issues. So you can say to them, look. You obey God's law, but if you're rebellious against God's law, what you're really teaching your child is to be rebellious against God's law. It's like the man who's smoking away with his cigarette saying, don't you ever smoke. Well, he's not teaching them to not smoke. He's teaching them that I'm smoking, so you can. That's what he's yeah. teaching them. And, and so we need to understand that emotionally we're doing this to our children. While I hold on to specific emotions, I am teaching my child to hold on to those same emotions. 
while I'm holding on to different belief systems that are out of harmony with love, I'm teaching my child to have those belief systems, even if intellectually I'm thinking something else. And this is where it's important to understand how the soul operates. The soul of the child operates or functions in the same way that ours does, and that is what is inside of us emotionally is dictating, and belief systems and these other things are dictating what we do with our life. So, so in terms of what God would wish us to do under those circumstances is do what God does. So how does God treat you? God doesn't berate you every time you make a mistake. So don't berate your child every time you make a mistake. God doesn't punish you every time you make a mistake that's out of harmony with love. However, there is a consequence. There's a law that there's always a consequence of acting out of harmony with love. And God's laws are all proportional. In other words, if you break a little law, there's a little consequence. If there's a big law that you break, there's a big consequence. And we need to impose the same kind of uh, principles in our family. There's a big consequence every time that you break the laws of love. And there's, a, you know, and, and for if you break a smaller law, you know, like a, even just a physical law, then there's only a small consequence. And, and we get the, to understand what's going on. And to be honest, there is no need for us as parents to impose a greater consequence than what God's already imposing. Right? So, mm. so there's no need for me as a parent to construct more laws yep. than what God's yeah. constructed in terms of bringing up my child. What I need to do instead is show the child that this law exists and show the child how the consequence occurred yep. when they broke it. And that requires me explaining things. It requires me demonstrating through my own action things. And this is where I feel a lot, of, a lot of parents resist the process because what they are doing most of the time is they're trying to control the child because they've got a reduction in time themselves. They're always time constrained, most parents. And as a result, they enforce the law through a penalty system that is often far exceeding God's consequence system. And also it encourages, in fact, in the end, the child to fear the parent. So instead of the child feeling love for its own parent, the creator of its two bodies, and then feeling love as a result of that for God, God is now, uh, God is now someone they're afraid of because now they're also afraid of the parents who are acting yeah. on God's behalf. And that's uh, obviously a very negative thing to do. We want to provide an environment for the child where the child can explore its own nature to the fullest degree without limitation, or to put it more clearly, to put, explore to the full degree with the only limitation being that they act in harmony with love. Yep. And, and if that was done, then a lot of people would find they'd have very lovely child, children, they'd also have very lovely teenagers by the time these children become teenagers, and by the time the children become adults, they'd be very lovely adults. Yeah. yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe for the parents, like I've been through this process of trying to, you know, change my children without changing myself first. Yes. And it's... Doesn't work too do well. It doesn't work. Doesn't work it doesn't work at yeah. all. Yeah. yeah. Particularly if you're trying to come to God, it never works at all. And, and this is why a lot of people who are religious, for example, find that their children are in complete rebellion because they are trying to force their religion on their child and that is already breaking one of the laws. Now, the consequence of that is that you will cause rebellion. So the child will automatically go into rebellion as a consequence of your attempt to force the child into your belief system. And, and every time you do that, you're not honouring the free will of the child. Now, the child feels that you're not honouring its free will as a natural consequence of, of your action. And then as a, a result of that, tries to rebel against it, just like you do yep. when somebody else yep. doesn't honor yep. yours, right? Yep. And, uh, and so in the end, if we've got rebellious teenagers, the only person that's created a rebellious teenager is the parent. And they've created it by or through their actions that have been out of harmony with God's laws, even if they believed that such actions were yep. in harmony with God's laws. Yep. And this is the problem that we have as parents. We often see the results of what we're doing going negatively. You know, they, we see that the, the consequences of what we are doing are not working. And instead of going to ourselves, well, maybe there's something inside of me that's causing this direction to be taken by the child, yep. we go, oh, bloody child, 
you know, oh, it's got its own personality, mm. it should, which God gave it as a gift, by the way, or, or, or you know, it's got its own will and we've not honoured these things. And, and now we're condemning the child. Now we're angry with the child. Now who's being unloving? Yeah. So we've taught them something and then we're punishing them. We're taught them, them for that. Yes, and we're, then we're punishing them for, for taking actions based on what we taught them. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty unfair. That's like a double punishment. Yeah. Like, like, firstly, we've taught them something that's wrong, and then on top of that, we're punishing them for doing uh, what, what is the natural occurrence or the natural result of them following our previous ideals. Yeah. And, and then we blame them for that. And then we say, oh, well, that's terrible personality or that's a terrible child. And you've been, like I heard one woman say, you've, my daughter was bad from the moment she was born. Right? <laughs> you know, that, that is the indication of a parent who has no idea whatsoever what, about what they've done. No, none whatsoever. No humility, no, no desire to know any truth about love at all if they can believe such a thing. Now, the child, if it's crying from the moment it's born, is immediately reflecting the, the parent's condition, immediately. Yeah. And this is beautiful. This is telling the parent, you're out of line with love here. The child can't even think yet, and already it's responding with pain and suffering, yeah. which is an indication that you're in a lot of pain and suffering that you're in denial of as a parent. And, and once you realise that, you have the power to change it. If you don't realise that, you'll seek medication, you'll seek vias, medical yeah. or otherwise, and you'll go through long-winded processes that will never result in the, in the outcome of actually helping this child go into a state of personal calm so that it's able to experience itself without having to experience your oppression constantly mm. from your emotional condition. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's a pretty powerful thing as a parent to mm. understand that you can change you know, how they are or what they've what they're doing, like yeah, very you can much change so. yourself, and yep, and and I feel once most parents explore that and and experiment with that, they'll find wow, yeah, I've dealt with an emotion, and wow, look at the result that's had on that child. Like before, I was trying to push it around and control it and everything, and I just deal with that emotion, and now the child's beautiful. Like, yep. what what's going on there? Well, what's going on is the child's no longer experiencing something from you, and of course, there's not just the parent that's a part of the environment. You've got to remember that these children are surrounded by spirits too. So, and the, the way the child acts is also being dictated to by spirits. And so it could be that you've got a problem with the spirits, you know, that you need to yep. sort, yeah. sort yourself out. There's all sorts of issues that are potentially the problem. But, but again, if you learn about it, you have a much greater ability to actually heal the process than what most parents on this planet currently even conceive. You know, and most parents on the planet feel that every child, by the time you had two children, you realise that every child that's born has a different personality, right? <laughs> As you know. And, um, and, and so, you know, most parents believe, oh, it's just the personality of the child that dictated how the rest of their life turned out. Not at all. What dictated every time the child acted out of harmony with love, what dictated that was the parents' emotions and the parents' feelings and the parents' belief systems most of which the parent believes are true. That's the problem. The yeah. problem is they think they're right when they're actually wrong. And this is where it takes a lot of humility as a parent. To be a good parent, you need to be a very humble person because you will realise that when this child is very, very young and unable to intellectually decide things for itself and it's in a lot of pain and suffering or creating a lot of pain and suffering for you, that it's a direct reflection of what's going in inside of yourself. Yeah. And if you understood that, you had the power to change it. If you don't understand that, you don't have the power to change. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you, you can see it quite clearly that you, know, you can see something going on with your child mm -hmm. and you can feel yourself going, yeah, that child, this, you know, it, that, that's out of harmony with love and I don't feel that way. Yep. But when you explore that within yourself a bit more, mm -hmm. you end up realising, wow, that child is just totally reflecting how I really feel about that. Exactly. So most of the time as, as adults, we've learnt to lie to ourselves first. So we've learnt to lie to ourselves about what we truly feel. So a lot of people, by the time they've become parents, have lied to themselves so much that they now believe their own lies. And this is a problem because we believe emotionally, believe, 
and, and intellectually believe that we don't have specific emotions inside of us that we actually have that create the reality of our life. Now, if we become a parent, we'll see all of these things naturally being acted out in our child. And, and unfortunately, we'll tell ourselves, I don't believe that. Like I've, I've seen many women, for example, when, they, when they've got a small child, you know, toddler age, the, chi the child just goes up and hits another child. And, and the woman goes up and maybe even punishes the child and says, How dare, you shouldn't do that, not understanding that the parent herself actually had that emotion towards that yeah. child or towards that child's parents that the child was just acting out or acting upon. Right? The child doesn't know what it's doing. It hasn't got an intellectual cognizance of its actions, particularly when it's not intellectually fully developed by the time of seven years of age. Yeah. If it's two or something, it's just beginning its intellectual development really in a lot of ways. And yet it's still acting out something. And, and yet many of the women in those situations that I've seen go, oh, I don't know why my child's like that. Well, yeah, I do. I can see the it's, same emotion inside it's of pretty you, clear, right? It's pretty clear. Yeah. And the child is reflecting back at you with, with clarity what's really going on. And uh, this is one of the beauties of having a child, which we can talk about as you further questions. But getting back to the issue about how God trains the child, God trains the child by this system of laws, which are all based around love. And God would love the child to be able to receive love. But again, that has to start with the child's longing for that love. Now, if as a parent we are blocked towards God and blocked towards longing for God's love, then we are automatically imposing that blockage on our child. All right? so, so this is a problem if you think about it. You can say if, if, if as a parent... I am blocking God's love. So let's say I believe I'm not worthy for God's love. Then my soul is telling my child, you're not worthy for God's love either. Yep. Right? And I can say, oh, God loves you to the child. I can say it. But because I don't feel it, the child can feel the hypocrisy of that. And that emotion is in the child by now, generally, yep. where the child doesn't feel that God's going to love it either. And so the child won't ask. The child won't embrace the process of desire to have a relationship with its true parent, God. So we can tell our child to do this or do that or do this or do that, but in the end, if our emotions are completely opposite. Now, now another example, many parents are in complete rebellion to God's laws. Right. So, so here I am as a parent in complete rebellion to God's laws and I'm telling my child that it has to come to acknowledge God's laws. And I've heard through lectures or whatever what God's laws are, and so I try to tell my child about God's laws. The child's not going to take any notice whatsoever. Yep. What it's going to take notice of is what does its parent think is God's laws. <laughs> and if the parent wants to rebel against God's laws all the time, what do you think the child's going to finish up doing? They have to. It's, it's going to do the same thing. Eventually it's going to rebel against God's laws, but it's also going to rebel against the parent's laws <laughs> to demonstrate to the parent what it feels like yep. <laughs> to be the creator of someone who then rebels against you, yep. right? which is exactly mm. what they're doing with God. And so there's a whole series of things that we need to take into account when we, are, when we ask the question, how does God train us? How, does, you know, how can I train my child the way God would train the child? And the reality, unfortunately, is uh, in this day and age that, that if the care, if care in terms of physical nurturing and care was given to the child and the parent did nothing else, often the child will grow up in a better condition than with what parents are currently doing. Yep. Right? Now, now, I'm not suggesting that is the answer. What I'm suggesting is the answer is that parents look at all of their blockages, look at all their blockages to emotion, their blockages to love, their blockages to truth, their blockages to humility, because if they don't look at their blockages, their child's going to reflect every single one of them and, and it becomes a nightmare, as you know sometimes being mm. a parent, when you've yep. just got constant moment after moment after moment after moment, the child showing back to you all the things. <laughs> yeah, it's you're reflection 24-7. And if you're not open to seeing that, or you don't want to see it, then yeah, yeah, it gets pretty... It gets pretty know, confronting. I've, yeah, I still do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you wonder, what the hell is going on with my life? <laughs> like, what a mess this is. And then you realise, you know, and if you're a wise parent, you'll realise very early in the stage, ah, oh, this is something going on with me. 
Yep. And, uh, and then by the time the child is seven years of age and it's got a, a fairly fully developed intellect, and then by the time it's 14, 15, 16 years of age and it's developed itself emotionally quite well as well, and by that stage developing sexually, and by the time it's 19, 20 and developed emotionally, sexually and physically, um, then you'll find the child will act in harmony with love automatically, not because you taught it to, but, but because it has a relationship with God, it desires to act in harmony with love. And so it does what it wants, but what it wants is in harmony with yeah. love. That, that's the ideal situation. But I, I've never seen anyone on the planet reach that ideal situation, of course.